moving away a little bit from leaders, how can we make sure, and I guess that is partly a question to leaders, but how can we make sure that um, ordinary church members get a hold of this whole thing about being missional? How can you turn a church from being quite inward focused and, you know, like a little club perhaps to actually going out there into the world and, and, and seeing people become Christians? Well, that's part of what, one of my concerns is that, uh, you know, because I've written on church planning, I've written on church evaluation, I've written on missional stuff, and, uh, and, and have found largely that I think pastors get that, but they've struggled to communicate that to their congregations. Um, one, of the, one of the ways, you know, I, and I, I didn't come to talk necessarily plug the book, but I will mention that we have a new book that's specifically for that. It's called Compelled by Love, The Most Excellent Way to Missional Living. So it's a book on missional living written at the layperson's level. We're doing a blog tour right now uh, with it. Um, and, uh, and so it's, it's basically the focus is, is how because of what Christ has done on the cross, how are we compelled by love? That's that 2 Corinthians passage. And my hope is, I mean, I think ultimately if, if, if all pastors do is get excited about it and churches don't live different and engage lostness and hurting people, then I think ultimately all we've done is created a new word that doesn't lead to congregational change. Yeah. So have you got any tips uh, that you could sort of say in a nutshell as to how we can yeah. do this practically? Oh, sure, sure. I think first and foremost, it has to be a, a sense of changing of agenda. Um, you know, in First Second Corinthians there, which is the theme we kind of built the book around, it says that they, you know, they should no longer live for themselves. Um, and so I think it has to be no longer about my preferences. Um, churches, churches will fight to the death over their preferences. As a matter of fact, I'm convinced that most churches in the West you could come into a church and preach heresy, and the next week, they'd, if you had a video and were funny, they'd invite you back and make you the pastor. Um, but if you change the order of service, you'd have to get in order of the U-Haul truck and start packing your things. So people will, will, will be very passionate about, well, the wrong things. They're passionate about their preferences. They're not passionate about the things of God. And so I think it's got to start with a focus on it's not about me. It, it's, it's ultimately about God, his agenda, his glory, his honor, and his mission. And so I think first and foremost it starts with a change of preferences. Secondly, I think a change of attitude. If we go back to that 2 Corinthians 5 passage, it says we no longer know anyone in a purely human way. Even if we've known Christ in a purely human way, we no longer know him like that. Then it talks about therefore if anyone's in Christ, there's new creation. I think the new life in Christ needs to, leads to a new perspective of people. I think we need to remember that the lost are not the enemy, they're prisoners of war. And so ultimately, we've got to see them as people that God loves. Um, we've got to see them as people that God has sent us on a mission to, to reach out to. And so I think ultimately it's changing the view of how we see people. And thirdly, I think ultimately it, it, there, there has to be a new reflection on the cross. The whole 2 Corinthians 5 passage ends with uh, the imputation passage, that he who knew no sin uh, became sin for us. God made the one who knew no sin to be sin for us, so we might become the righteousness of God in him. I think when we get what took place on the cross when, in Jesus' uh, death, and as sin was imputed to him, so righteousness might be imputed to us, I think when we get that, it leads to all the rest. We're compelled by love. If we're out of our mind, it's for the sake of God. If we're in our right mind, it's for you. It, it changes everything. And so I do think a stronger recovery of cross-focused ministry is essential to that as well. So there's three, three bullet points, did you say? Those are three bullet points. There you well, go. Yeah, that's pretty good.